now I'd like to introduce uh, somebody I don't know. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, <laughs> Katy from uh, the Fundacio Solidaritat uh, in, with the University of Barcelona. You'll explain perhaps a little bit how that works. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Katy Jerez. Uh, I come from the Fundació Solidaritat, Solidarity Foundation from the University of Barcelona. I'm going to explain a little, ah, <laughs> I know someone here, <laughs> okay. Um, I will explain who we are and what's our position into the University of Barcelona. Uh, here, right now, I'm coming from the Solidarity Foundation. Tomorrow, I will be representing the University of Barcelona. Has, this has an explanation, <laughs> coming soon. Yeah, this is a PowerPoint. Okay, um, this is like an overview about the University of Barcelona, half faculties, professors, students. We have a structure that is very common at universities. There is the rector or president and vice rectors. Okay, but the University of Barcelona has also a thing called UB Group, University of Barcelona Group, and this group is composed by specialized foundations. For example, ours is specialized in solidarity and, um, and international cooperation. We have the, uh, the Institute de Formación Continua, the IL3, it's the Lifelong Learning Institute of the University of Barcelona, and there are other, other foundations. The point here is that, as colleagues said before, university has a trend to be very slow in their decisions. And foundations, no, not necessary. So we depend on directly uh, the vice rectorate of uh, equality and social action. So we depend on the university, but we have full autonomy to design, take actions, and this is very nice because we can do things quickly. And. This is one of the points, the, the positive aspects of to be uh, a foundation in and out the university. So what is the Solidarity Foundation? It's the organization of the University of Barcelona focused on cooperation and solidarity. We work on social action and volunteering, cooperation for development and promotion of peace. We have different lines of action, social, you, you can see how wide a uh, range of actions, social agriculture programs, uh, social educative intervention programs, global citizenship research, recovery of historical memory, human rights, education for global justice, and this program of refugees that appeared in 2015. But we are doing other things. The Solidarity Foundation was created in 1996. So there is uh, a historical uh, trajectory. Nowadays, we are working with more than 30 Syrian, Afghan, Russian students that are participating in this refugee support program. But there, these uh, are people who are refugees. The support program involves more people. All the numbers are, are allowed one, are like more than 100 people that the refugee program is supporting in some way or in another. Okay, and this is the, the root of our action. You can see here the picture based on NHCR data that says that more than 71 million of people are in a situation of concern. More of, or more of, most of them concentrated in South America, Central Africa, and the Middle East region. Only one percent of students, refugee students, are accessing to the universities, only 1%. The worldwide um, percentage is around 34%. So there is a gap between refugee student access to university and the um, worldwide uh, students uh, accessing to the university. Why? We have, we know that there are some aspects that are preventing that the students that are preventing the students accessing to university. The first of one is the prior learning recognition, information about how to access universities, lack of scholarships, legal status, 
and socioeconomic integration. So we are trying to work on these topics. This is more or less the actions that the, the refugee support program has. I use refugee as in the same line that Henriette said before, not only for people who has achieved the recognition of the state, but people who are in a refugee-like situation. Okay, so at the first beginning, well, let me explain this. Uh, you have said, or we know that sometimes this is a bottom a process. In our case, we have the rector's mandate. In September 2015, when there was like this public outcry because of the image of this child, you know, in Catalonia there was a public outcry. Everybody wanted to do something, universities as well, and the rector at that time said, okay, the University of Barcelona will provide for, uh, for free tuitions, accommodation, um, healthcare, legal assistance, and so on. The, uh, the institution that is in charge to do that is the Solidarity Foundation. We, we are trying to shape the idea. So we were trying to arrange um, agreements with a specialized NGOs in order to provide accommodation for refugees. And we were um, doing language uh, training for, for non-Spanish for, for non speakers, okay? So this is very important, the rector's mandate. We have had two rectors, and this is also important, the continuity of this will. Uh, we have budget, this is also important. We have talked about economic resources. We have own resources, the accommodation, for example. The University of Barcelona has its own, its own, ref, uh, its own accommodation in university residence and has booked five rooms of, five rooms of three beds. So we have 15, 15 beds for, um, for refugees. I will talk later about how they will arrive. And we have three flats that we have arranged with those uh, uh, NGOs. We have also this. This is important. Professors, administrative staff, and university students that are very collaborative and very receptive. So with this, we have, you know, uh, create, design, and implement with agility, okay, uh, a, a program. The, we are focused in this transition uh, to university course it's an initiative, I think, well, you can tell me before, I don't know if Pioneer is the, uh, the concept, but it's new, at least in Spain. We have 15, one, five scholarships for students that are in the areas of violence, okay, that are in Syria, in Afghanistan, in Yemen, whatever, that they are not in Spain. This is very important because the people who we are attending here in the, in the accommodation or the Spanish learning courses are right now here in Spain or in Barcelona. But this transition to university scholarship is for people who are other places, okay? Who are living the violence directly. So uh, we have 15 scholarships. We, well, we launch a call. There, are a there is a selection of participants and 15 of those selected participants come to Barcelona and, uh, and start this inclusion service. Yeah, well, see, this is inclusion strategy. We we'll start with this transition. It's a language learning course of one year. It's a, a language course, but we do know here we speak Spanish and Catalan, so they learn both languages at the same time. This is a new methodology that we are implementing. I have to say that the first edition of the course took place in 2016. There was another uh, in 2018, and we will have a next one in 2019. So right now we have 30 people that have been through this language learning course. 
And we also have a human rights module in the course. It's not only to learn languages, it's more than learn languages. The co this course is co-founded by the University of Barcelona and the Barcelona City Council. Okay, and here start the alliance with public administrations. And it's a university extension course. It means it's official. And to be part of the course is to be part of the university community. Students have the university card and access to all services, like a regular students, because at least they are regular students. They are international students, not only refugee with this stigma, no. We have also a language exchange program when they have enough skills to communicate with each other, with other people. Then we have agreed with the Faculty of Education of the University of Barcelona to collaborate in a program they, were, they are running already, and University of Barcelona students participate in this language exchange program. We are trying that this program this year, we have opened this language exchange program to people outside the university. And here we have a, an example, I don't know if yeah. <laughs> Francesca is part as volunteer of, of the program. We have also a, psychology, a psychosocial support program agreed with the Faculty of Psychology. As you can see, we are trying to create a inter, an internal network that help us with all the, uh, all the situation we are handling because we need the language exchange program, we need the psychosocial support program, okay? This uh, psychosocial support program is, is led by the, the Faculty of Psychology and by Professor Jose Bachotegui, is one of the experts in migrations and refugee situations concerning to the psychosocial dimension. And there is an agreement to care students who need psychological support by one uh, of the organizations dedicated to this. And we have the accommodation. As I said before, this is a scholarship. It's a full scholarship. There is the free tuition for this course. And there is the accommodation for free, full board. And there is pocket money for them. All of them covered by the university and the Barcelona City Council. And the accommodation in the first phase is at the um, University of Barcelona residence. Okay. So they are with international and national university uh, students, I mean, international and national students. This is like a bubble, and they can live there, and we can control if something is happening, if someone is sad, if someone, I don't know, sometimes there, yeah, there are fightings or something like this, we can know and we can do something. Okay, in, or, in order to repair uh, the situation. We have, we have also the protocol. I'm doing very fast, I know, but we don't have time. If you need more information, please ask them they ask later. You have the protocol of recognition of prior learning. As I, said, as I said before, there is a problem with the recognition. It's one of the first obstacles. The Ministry of Education of Spain says that we don't have any kind of problem to for, in the access of foreign people because if they have all the documents ready, yes, but what happens when, when the documents are not stamped or when you don't have documents? There's no answer from our Ministry of Education. So the answer of the University of Barcelona has to create this protocol. So we have this protocol. It was approved in May 2018. It's, it's very new. We are, we are in beta version. We are proving it, testing it. We don't know how it will work, but we are doing our first steps. Well, when they finish, when students finish the, uh, the course, the transition course to the university, they start with their classes, OK? We have 11 students at the university in different degrees, masters and postgraduates. And, and here in these situations, we are implementing the tutorial action plan. That means to activate teachers and activate students. Students to give support the, uh, to the students, to, to the refugee students in order to facilitate 
the uh, incorporation to the studies because I have been talking with the Finnish guys that there is a problem with the expectations that students have uh, in their studies and there is, well, they come from another system and they have to, you know, adapt to the new system and this requires time and effort and understanding. Well, we have a second phase in the accommodation field. We agree with NGOs and city councils from the surroundings of Barcelona. The, um, the existence of flats there where students from the residents can go and be part of the city, leave the city, you know? And this, this is important to promote this social integration. And we have the legal advice. We have agreed with an NGO called CITE that the, uh, the uh, students can go there everywhere, every, when they need to ask for legal advice. Uh, it's very important because they have come here as international students, okay? This is the uh, strategy we have. They come here as international students, and once they are here, they can decide if they want to, to go and ask for asylum, or they would like to maybe stay here, uh, spend three, th three years here, and then ask for a work permit and, and a residence permit. Okay, and this is more or less what we are doing. And we are also doing, we have an agreement, we have to sign next week or the other with Nestlé in, in Spain in order to give the students of the program the opportunity to be part of an internship. And that's it. <laughs>